Do you give a kiss to your watches in the morning? Well, I wind them, so yes, absolutely. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the LA and LA watch series. I'm super excited to meet with Morgan King, who's not only a life enthusiast, but a watch passionate. So let's go talk to him and put this down. Hey guys, this is Ele in LA. We're here for a watch series and I'm here with a very special guest. His name is Morgan King and he happens to be not only the king of watches, but the king of real estate here in LA, right? Well, some would say I'm just a landlord. So Yeah, you buy stuff, you, yeah. you rent them out and you chill. Yeah, I clean toilets okay. and I, uh, I will buy your doormat if you rent from me. So yes, I'll be there. Perfect, I'll keep that in mind. Next time I come to Abbott Kinney, because you don't really see it, but that's where we are, one of my favorite places, favorite streets here in LA, beautiful sun, palm trees are around. So here Morgan brought with him 11 pieces, very rare, each of them have very cool story. You're a very cool guy. I have to thank Roy Davidoff here from Davidoff Brothers to make the introduction. Um, so first, before we get into the whole, uh, how did you buy your first watch is, what made you like and enjoy watches? Because also you're wearing two. I am wearing two. I always like to wear two because one is LA time and one is pimp time. <laughs> okay. That's how I do it. I'm just like, you know, if you can have two supermodels on your wrist at all times and not get in trouble with your wife, why wouldn't you? And so these are my little cheats. This is my little pleasure of life. But your wife asks you not to wear two when you guys are going on a regular thing because they don't want people to think you're too weird. Yeah, someone needs to be, you know, in their right frame of mind. They, they need to kind of tell me, you know what, Morgan, it's, you should stop doing that. You're embarrassing yourself. And I'm like, okay, thank you, honey, of course. So thank you for, for my wife for, for keeping me in line. Otherwise, I'd be in prison probably. I'd probably be in jail. I'd get arrested. You think? For what reason? Sure. Everything, you name it. I just go on a whim, whatever it is, I feel I like I think I'll name done. it because you gave me something like you're, I mean, you, you collect a lot of things, but one thing that you particularly enjoy is walking on the beach with Uggs, a trikini, or maybe in a mohawk, yes. from my understanding. Yes, if I could find one on the beach. Sometimes it's seaweed, sometimes it's kelp, <laughs> whatever I could find, just to draw attention. I, I was a very needy child, so when I was, I was growing up, I was like, hey, look at me, look at me, I'm special. But were you the only child? I was not. That's, oh, the, that's the problem. I'm the third out of four. So I'm kind of like the middle kid. Okay. So I'm always like me, the middle child syndrome. What about me? What about me? Don't forget about me. Come on. Right? They always say the squeaky wheel gets the most oil. So of course. I learned a thing or two. So you grew up between Taiwan and the US, correct? I was born in Taiwan uh, when I immigrated to America in New York City when I was about nine months old. The Queens? Queens, yeah, basically Queens. Go Mets, huh? I'm not wearing orange and blue, but we'll see some orange and blue in my collection. Perfect. Spoiler alert. Speaking about collection, what was the first watch you ever got? The first watch I got was the Tag Heuer F1. Quartz, it was a quartz movie. This was before I knew about automatics and Marino lines. So to me, it was like, oh, that's cool. Aren't all watches quartz? Because I started off with swatches, swatches. But I don't count those, because those were things that I got as gifts. The Tag Heuer F1 was the first watch that I actually bought for myself. And I was like, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna buy a real adult watch and it was in Switzerland because my buddy uh, John was uh, his mother was in the United Nations so he was nice enough to bring me along with him and I was like I'm gonna go to this place because in Switzerland as you know chocolate Swiss Army knives and watches and cheese and cheese but I wasn't into cheese back then <laughs> so I got you know I went to a store looking for chocolate Swiss Army knives and watches and I came out with a watch and that's dark or, or, or milk chocolate for, cho for chocolate Ooh. I like milk chocolate, but sometimes you need something dark. Swiss just for the people bitterness. don't think milk chocolate is real chocolate. Is that, oh, yeah. Is that is that true? Yeah. Oh man, I feel so, I feel so American. I don't, I'm so <laughs> unknowledgeable. You know, it's like watches, like quartz. Now, not so much when you're a watch collector. So, you, would you go for mechanical but manual winding or automatic winding? There's something about manually winding a watch. It's kind of like foreplay, right? You pull yeah. it out, you look at the time, you always kind of like. It's nice because you kind of remember what time it is. What time is it now? It's 11.15. You look at it, you wind it, you make sure it's just right. Sometimes you gotta go forward, sometimes you gotta go back. But it's kind of like giving your, your kids a kiss in the morning. Like, hey, what's going on? It's like that first initial contact. Do you give a kiss to your watches in the morning? Well, I wind them, so yes, absolutely. <laughs> you can't kiss them, they, you know, they're not waterproof when the crown's open, so you, you kind of do it that yeah, way. Yeah, right, you don't need to actually dribble on it. Right, right. Like, 
But I do ew kisses, and when no one's looking, yes, I do kiss them. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anyone. I mean, it won't get out of the web, I promise. The other one, yeah, you better edit that out. You better. The other watches will get very jealous. Perfect, so now let's dig in. Yes. Watches, you have the tag, prototype? Uh, yes, uh, the tag for prototype, the, I guess it's 1133, but with the uh, rising sun, Monaco dial prototype, which is kind of cool, which I brought. I brought it because, you know, it's different. I like yeah. it because it kind of tells you what how something starts doesn't how it ends sometimes. Uh, they went through so many different stages, and of course, with all the other looks about it, it's completely different what it is. So I enjoy this, where it reminds me, like, plus there's only one of, of this style that I know of. And how was it to meet Jack Herrera? Jack is great. He was the first Jack, man. so now you're on the first name me basis. Me Jack, you know, <laughs> he calls me, hello. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. But. I realized that when he pronounces this, I call it the Hoyer Monaco. He says it the Hoyer Monaco. Monaco. I didn't said. know that. I felt like, my gosh, I'm sorry. I've been saying it wrong all this time. So I, my apologies, Jack. My apologies. So now you're buddies. Now we're buddies. I uh, I text him. Uh, we do DMs. I send him D pics, which are Daytona pics. <laughs> you know, for the. Uh, he follows you on TikTok. Oh yeah, I'm sure he does. We do we do dances together. Absolutely. Got it. Although I haven't heard from him for the last week, so. Call me, Jack. Call me. Figure it out. <laughs> uh, what do you have on your right wrist? Ah, the right one. This is another special one. This one here is the Rolex 6240 reference. It is an RCO. The reason why this is a little bit different because there's about maybe... Uh, I've been told that there's no more than 12 pieces, but definitely under 30, let's just say. But okay. I've seen four in the flesh. But these are one of the coolest watches that you can like. Because number one, these dials, the dial was actually not originally designed this way. So the, okay. the black dial on the RCO are basically old pump pusher Paul Newman dials. So okay. when they first started, it said Rolex Cosmograph RC. Yep. And if it's a screw screwed out punch pusher, which is a waterproof, then they stamp oyster on it. Yep. Okay. So the if you look at the 6263 reference, 6265 reference, 6 240. Sorry, getting nerdy. But if yeah, you go with very those, geeky. I mean, my wait, apologies. Way get out of this body right now. Way, I'm sorry. Get, get out of your way. <laughs> but when you have the screw down pushers, that makes it waterproof. So you have to stamp oyster right. on it. And the ones that don't have screw downs or pump pushers, they don't have oysters on it. So they took, they recycled old Paul Newman dials that were meant for pump pushers. And because they knew they're going to screw down pushers, they stamped oysters at the third line. So that's why all these RCOs are called. RCLs for Rolex Cosmograph Oyster compared to something else. That's ROC. Where did you learn all of that? It's called the internet. <laughs> and you have a lot of things on the internet that are just not true. Right, right, that's true. That's why you have to, it's very important to be affiliated with people that know what you're doing, that you trust. Because the watch world, as you know, is crazy. There's so many people talking about certain things. You don't know who, what to believe. I have some pieces Especially that Especially now that it has become such a hot topic. Everybody thinks that they know what they're talking about, but a lot of them actually don't. It's all about blind confidence. It's kind of like how I'm doing now. I'm just confident. <laughs> yeah, pretending you master the topic, yeah. but you actually don't. Yeah. Fake until you make it, right? That's how that it works. That is true. Well, welcome to America. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so this is one of the other ones that I really, really love. I love how it pops. It's very, very special. Uh, there was uh, a couple of these that went up for auction a few years back that was, at the time, unheard of. This is, of course, uh, as you know, the Paul Newman, Paul Newman, mm -hmm. that went up. And after that, it just went bonkers and bananas. So I'm very, very fortunate to have found this particular piece. Um, obviously, when you go back to the whole Daytona chronograph functions, you'll notice that I really enjoy chronographs. I like pushing buttons. It's just kind of fun. I always feel like, you know, I, although I do have personal watches that do not have chronograph functions, I feel like it kind of balances out the dial a bit more. You know, it gives a nice little face, especially with the little registers. It almost feels like there's an eye and, and, a, and a mouth. And you, you get to talk yeah, to it's it. like little toys, but I mean, you should be used to toys. You're, you have three kids. Well, one of it is 17, so he's kind of a grown up. Yeah, she's 17. And sadly, my wife always says, I don't have three kids. I have four. Oh yeah, because you're part of them. Yeah. But there's this child that claims that is my husband, but <laughs> I don't know. He just follows me around and won't leave. That's how it works. Oh well, well she's not big into watch collecting, but is your daughter or any of, the, of your kids interested in watches? Have you ever like given them a watch with like a, a true meaningful story when you turn 18? I mean, I know it's more 21 in the U.S., but have you? Did you ever think about what you were gonna get her? Well, yes and no. That's a very good question because that's foreshadowing. She just mentioned, hey, Dad, can I have one of your watches? Oh, so she's not asking for a new one. She's asking for one of yours. She wants one of mine with my essence. And I'm like, well, do you know which ones I have? And she's like, don't you have like three? I'm like, yes, I only have three. <laughs> You'll get one. 
So uh, the, the one that she's looking at is a Johans, the chronoscope, which is the, okay. uh, the bill. That's facts, an interesting right? choice. Well, she loved it because it has a red date. It has the, the concrete band. It has like the anniversary series. So those are awesome. So when she saw this, like, Dad, I love it. It's clean. She's very, very minimalistic also. So it has a really nice touch to it. So I'm like, that's yours. But secretly, I bought two. So I'll give her one. So you're like a sneakers addict. You basically, you buy two of everything. Yes. But right now, considering that it's already hard to buy just one, how do you negotiate that? Well, I got very lucky where I got in early. I got in before these were just so hard to find. So I based upon passion. I've always grown up uh, in a very, very humble household and I was always told, no, 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 you can't do this, we can't afford that. No, 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 you, you go So stand reverse out. psychology, now you want it all. Now I want it all. I want to be different. I, I want to enjoy life and not be told no. That's okay. why my wife and family sometimes are like, honey, no. But thank, thank yes. God your wife doesn't collect watches the way you do. Yes, that's right. She collects money. She likes to collect money a lot. Absolutely. Good. But she collects it and you spend it. Yes. Good balance. And that's why we have separate bank accounts too. <laughs> She's smart. <laughs> I want to meet your wife. <laughs> oh, you will. She's standing right there. She's a stalker. I'm kidding. With the gun? Is she <laughs> the one? <laughs> She's security right now. Perfect. But uh, as far as that's concerned, I love chronographs and that's something okay. that I really do enjoy. Now, if I may, I brought a little bit of a plethora of things to show you. As you Please. know, you saw the yep. Warrior Monaco. You saw the Monaco, excuse me. You have the RCO. Now what I do is because I collect. I, I have can them. see like the Rolex thing happening yes. here. So we're basically cheating. Yes, we're cheating, but you know, we'll, we'll show that when, when the crown shows up. But I just randomly close my eyes and pull out a bag and that's how I normally do things. It's almost like a surprise. You know when you wake up and you go in your closet and you want to buy something, you pull <laughs> A pair of jeans and you're like I'm gonna wear this what do I match with this and you go well first I need to make sure that the jeans fit depending they on fit. how much cheese I got the last the uh, night before look, stretchy pants stretchy pants that's all <laughs> wear leggings is. wear leggings or have someone who is a bigger size and you put them on first they'll stretch them <laughs> right. out that's what I do that's what the kids make me do but lo and behold the first one magic is my first watch that I bought the tag core nice F1. you still have it of course I still have it now the trick to this was when I went to my heritage meeting in Tag Quarry, at the Tag Quarry Museum, one of the fine service people at Tag Quarry, thank you Tag Quarry, looked at this watch because I brought it with him. I'm like, look at this. I, it's my first one of his watch. The bezel all, was all messed up. The internal movement, because of course, you know, got messed up and oily and everything. He's like, I believe we have some parts for this. Would you like me to replace anything? I'm like, replace all of it. Really? So he went in. It's a brand new watch now. Practically brand new watch. Now, he did give me back the pieces, so I do have the original one. So if I ever wanted to put it all back to the original pieces, it would be fine. Did but you frame it in this, like, you know, No, I'm not weird. <laughs> really? Who does that? No, no. It's in a bag that says Tag Order F1, do not throw away, kind of thing. <laughs> the tape so, on it. Exactly. So the bezel, the bond, everything. That's on a cool. red Hoyer F1, of course. Of course. That's the way to do it. Uh, this thing has gone with me through everywhere. I've showered with it. I've uh, gone to the ocean like a with it. It's a toys watch. So it is cool. a toys watch. And uh, that's why I think I love that. I got it at the right time because at the time I didn't really know too much about watches. The first yeah, but watch chronograph. Your first watch was already a chronograph. The first one that I actually bought. Everything else I always pleaded for my parents. Please, mom, please, dad, I want one. Please buy this for me. Did that work each time? Uh, one out of 10. So you have to ask a hundred times. At least you'll get something back. Oh, good. Yeah, so this one is uh, still, I also have spare parts for it. So I have an extra bezel. I have an extra band. Uh, I also have extra hands because you know, you never know. You, you need everything extra yes. just in case. It's better to have it and not need it than to want it and not be able to get. That is true. Right? Rock one, what is it? One to rock, one to stop. It takes, takes you a lot of time. Yes, well, I do have a lot of time in my hands. So that I'm is just true. Constantly just running around finding stuff. So that's number one. So I will put this back because this, unless you, should we leave it out? After. We'll, After. we'll, we'll yeah. do that. So we'll put this back here and I'll put this down here. And the second wash I have is another green bag. They're all kind of the same, so I don't know what's what, so I don't like okay. play favorites. It's like Mary Poppins, yes. putting stuff out of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> I have a friend who actually goes in a sock drawer and they're never rolled up. They just, he just takes two socks and he puts them both on. You know what, I should do the same because I, I'm, I'm part of the people where the machine eats you know, the socks. So I have a bunch that are just like alone. So yeah, that should work actually. That's why I don't wear socks Single anymore. Single socks need love too. And sometimes they just, <laughs> they need a little bit of something. It might be a, a mid, a riff with the blue. 
It's okay, whatever works. That's oh. fine. Talking about the Mets in orange, we have something that's a little bit special. It is the Octo uh, Hoyer You do Octavia. love Tagueur. Yes. Tag I love by Tag the way. Tag I've been saying Hoyer all the time. It's not right. Yeah, I know, Hoyer. but. Sorry. I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> this one, though, is the exotic dial, the Octavia, the exotic dial, 1163. Now, out of all this, they say there is about 15 of these that exist with the okay. exotic dial, which is kind of cool. It's also a caliber 15, which I enjoy, so that helps me remember. 15 caliber, 15 dials. But I'm sure there's maybe a little more, a little less. Who knows? Who really, really knows? But I love this because it's uh, something that's very rare. I, at one point, I had four of these. I was at the uh, Heritage Summit meeting, which is the, where all Hoyer collectors go to, of course, in Switzerland during uh, Basel or uh, Washington Wonders now. But a lot of collectors get together, the Heritage, the Vintage. I like old watches and vintage watches because it kind of tells you where they've been. And where they go is up to you because you're Well, you're I'm sure you'll get along very well with Nicholas Bubank, who's the Heritage Director. Nicholas, I love yeah. Nicholas. Now, I met him actually with a weird story. I met him before he was the Heritage uh, Director for. Uh, so, when Tech he was at auction houses? When he was at auction houses, he was a regular guy. And we were at the Ted Corey event back when I think Patrick Dempsey was, uh, was there. And we nice. all decided to quote unquote get lost, left a little bit early for that conference to go to a Depeche Mode concert with the uh, Hublot. Hublot, I was there. <gasps> See? I was there. Did you get your tickets for uh, Depeche Mode in LA? They no, went on because six. Depeche Mode, quite frankly, is not my generation. So I'm not the biggest fan, okay. but it was okay. a very, very fun night. Fine, fine. Well, he, yes, Dave Gahan is lovely. I love him. I would have his children if they could, but I can't. So <laughs> but so we met years ago. Yes, we did. See, the Espe you don't remember Espe me. I would have remembered you for sure. I would have. I'm sure, especially if you were wearing a Hoyer. I would have been like, yo, Eleanor. In Basel, I been? wasn't wearing a watch. You, oh, then I, that's why. I don't, I don't, yeah, you don't pay attention to people who are men without watches. watches. The nine yeah, of boys. What, why? But how do you do now in LA? Since everybody keeps on saying that everything has become so dangerous and basically all the big cities like Paris, London and, and LA have become Mexico City. Sadly, no offense to Mexico City, we love you Mexico City. Of course but we do. It's gotten to a point super well. <laughs> it has gotten to a point where the uh, current economic situation is a little bit weird. I like to wear my watches at home when okay. I'm in the bathroom, brushing my teeth, <laughs> making myself some coffee. And okay. when I come out, I either wear my swatches or I wear something that I don't have a problem uh, donating to someone that happens to want them more than I do. Donating is like... Yeah. Today is a very special occasion. That's why you're very special. I came out for you. Thank you, you so know. much. I really appreciate it. I don't know if you it. can see, but my group of security guards are still in the back. They're well, your wife patiently. is handling everybody right now. So <laughs> yes, she's exactly. She's great. She's great. <laughs> so this is the Octavia. Exotic doll, and I love it. Very so cool. I was able to get four of these only because at the event, I didn't ever finish my story, forgive me. I ramble, as you know. I, I hounded every single collector that was there that had one of these. There was four of them. So I went to four of them and says, please, please, sell me your, your Octavia. Oh, because you it. never let things go. At some point, it was like, get the fuck out. Just take it and get the fuck out. Well, my question, my thing has always been, if you don't ask, you don't receive. That's right? true. Nothing to lose trying. You're right. You got to try. And if, like poker, if you want to win it, you got to be in. You got to go all in. You got you to any up. You got to have skin in the game. So I asked, and forever I thought, no one's going to call me. But little one by one. They called me and I said, yes, I would buy it. Second one, yes, I'd buy it. The third one, yes, I'd buy it. The fourth one, yes, I'd buy it. And it was wonderful. So four of them? Four of them. What do you do with four At of first, the same watches? I did so many selfies. I put them <laughs> on my wrists, I put them on my neck, I put them on, you know, every single tag coil. You should F1 wear it helmet. like this and it's just covering all the way down. Oh. That's just weird. Man, you Europeans, <laughs> my goodness, my lord. Interesting, but I'll remind Keep that for that next time. Yes, I'll do that. But I believe in the watch gods. I believe in karma. If there's a watch you're not wearing, or if you have too much, right? You gotta give it back. You know, because at the end of the day, we're all passionate about the same things. It's almost like going to your favorite Depeche Mode concert and you're buying all, all the seats. You don't, you buy one, you buy two, maybe if you want to put something for your bag. But you gotta let the other 30,000 people show up. Enjoy. Right? Enjoy. The so, same way you do. With me, I picked the only one that really spoke to me. It was this one. This one had a really nice bezel, it had a really nice dial, and I had a great patina on it. I'm like, you know what? I'm keeping you. The other three, which are still beautiful, but they spoke to me less. So I said, you know what? I'm okay. them along. So they're no longer with me. But I did have four at one point, and I think I might have a picture of it here or there that I still like look at just to say, 
I remember you all, and I love you all. So <laughs> I do that. Octavia, exotic dial. Now, let's see. What's we're talking number three, Mary, four? What's coming up next? Let's see. The same pouch. The same all pouch. Time. It's actually the same pouch. I just magically <laughs> could put uh, watches Please in Please teach me a trick. You want to? I'll show you a trick if you like. Always. Oh, ooh, you'll love this one. This one is the Breitling 806. That's a cool one. Venus 178, reference 806. Similar bracelet. You kind of like the punched yes. leather bracelet. The core foam rally is what they call it, at least okay. for the hoarder. This one, I, I don't know, this one actually was an eBay band that I bought that came on a watch. I think okay. it was on a, uh, maybe another Breitling. But I loved it so much, it's it's made in Canada. Well done, Canadians. <laughs> but I put it on this because it seems, it's nice, it's nice and thin, but I love it because it's the big register. It's an 806 big register um, from 1972 for this particular serial number. I love it because it's just classic. And it's got the slide, slide roll, circular and slide And when roll. do you decide to wear that one over the other ones that you have in your magic pouch? On oh, my other pouches? Well, that's why all my watches are in bags like this. I will never know. One. I don't play favorites. I pull it out. It's that sock. Like remember that sock we had in that conversation? Yep. You pull out the one sock, don't look for the matching one. Just pull the other one out and you're wearing both socks. At least your okay. feet will stay dry. So here, same thing. Same I always thing. pull out two bags. So it means that you're never late because you have two watches. Well, they say a man with two watches they never really is quite sure what time it is, right? <laughs> okay. So, but that, that's true. But mo a lot of times I always make sure my left hand is round. So it's actually has the right time. Okay. The right one is more like, more like a bracelet, more of like decoration. A piece of jewelry. Yes, but sometimes- you, You're also wearing two rings. Yes. I like symmetry, okay. kind of, right? Right? Does that make sense? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I go for asymmetrical. I find it more interesting. <laughs> well, then that well, that's why you only have one watch on one wrist and one bracelet. But that's kind of symmetrical, right? Kind of. Yeah, that's true. No. But anyway, talking oh, about that. You have two earrings. <laughs> you have two ears. Well, two holes on one ear. No holes on that. The other man. one. Okay, we'll, we'll talk to your therapist about that. You got to change things up. I need bit. to find a therapist. There's plenty in LA. Everyone has mental issues. Everyone's crazy, including this guy right here. Do you want to talk about it? In therapy, yes, absolutely. Over matcha tea. Matcha <laughs> and scones. Tea. Let's go. Is, is there green matcha scones too? You enjoy that? Oh, yeah. Sheesh. Is that what, Well, you should be wearing green more. I I'm gonna, I know this matcha guy that I'll introduce you to. Things yeah. fall out of the truck for him. It's matcha shasha something. over there, right down the corner. <laughs> matcha shasha. <Before> the, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Another watch. You're sponsored by Rolex, I mean. Yes, Sp Rolex is sending me a watch, a Daytona, every day of the week uh, for the next year, so. Careful, because you're going to yes. have a lot of enemies right now. Ah, uh, yes, well, okay, fine, once a month. This is homage to your watch that you're wearing. You're wearing a Snoopy watch. Yep. And this one, because it's more modern, is uh, the Blue Snoopy, the 50th anniversary, the Silver Snoopy Award. The color of the blue, the three counters, and the difference of the blue on the third counter is just mind-blowing. Right? Yeah. Striking. It's incredible. With your hair in this blue, it's... You want to give it to me? Thank you so kinda much. Kind of like the, the New York Mets, right? Kind of like yep. the orange and the blue look. It's so bold. The coating is just legit. You're, what? You're taking your Snoopy off to put the other Snoopy on? Mm. I mean, green, it's matchy. Like, quite frankly, you should be wearing my watch and I should be wearing yours. Blue, green, green, blue. But you haven't worn that one quite a lot because I can feel that the bracelet is a bit... Well, the good news is because of the LA climate, I do wear it only at home. So when I'm walking around, it's, uh, you know, you can't get it too wound up when you're at home making coffee or brushing your teeth or changing socks. So, yes. 50th anniversary. 50th Yesterday, anniversary. actually a couple of days ago, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Carrera from Taguer. They released the car the, to sell the Porsche the RS. Yes, the exactly. Carrera. How do you say that? Carrera. Wow, you French are just so eloquent. <laughs> it's Carrera in America. Excuse yeah, me. it's Carrera in French. Wow. You wanna you wanna battle Ca right now? Ca Carrera. Carrera. Oh, you got roll. No, your don't tongue. add an H in the middle. Carrera. Repeat yeah. after me. Ca. Ca. Re. Eh, re. No re. You know I'm not Spanish. Re. Eh, re. You have to roll. Your, I, I'm horrible. Don't roll your eyes. Ka ka re re ra. ra. Yeah. Ka re ra. Man, <laughs> that's so hard to say. 
<laughs> Carrera. Okay, let's yeah. find it. Carrera. Fine. Snoopy. Beautiful. Beautiful. Amazing. So that one, as you know, is great. Caliber yeah. 3861. Yeah. It's the uh, re edition of the 1861. And of course, as you know, the Eyes stopwatch. The star. You know about the stopwatch feature, right? Yep. If you start the chronograph function and you wait 10 seconds, somebody flies over the moon to say hi to you in the CMS, the control mission shuttle. Is it coming out? Not quite. Seven, eight, nine, wait for it. Oh, it's not wound, of course not. These manual winds, <laughs> these Omega manual winds. Okay, so once you wind it and you press the chrono start function within and then 10 you seconds. Count from 10 to 10, 0. 9, 8, 7, 7 6, six five, 5, 4, 3, four, 2, two one. 1. Do you see it? Yep. Yes. Good old Snoopy coming out to say hello. Look at that. A little bit of LA with a little bit of Illinois. Yep. There you go. Perfect. So this one is great because it's, it's brand new. It's new. You know, it's, it's new. It came out fairly new. So I'm a big vintage guy. So for me, I like the old things because, you know, it kind of has a soul. It tells you what they did. It has did. a story to say. You can right. feel like... Do you believe in energies? Oh, absolutely. Right? Like with watches, scratches are like wrinkles. They yep. tell you, you know, how did you get that? What did you do? What were you thinking? Where Sometimes were you? Sometimes it's hard to know exactly the full story behind yes, it. That's right. Yeah, that's true. But at least you get an inkling. Like, you know, I remember yeah. when I first discovered that scratch, how I was gutted. I had this one watch that I went to a 7-Eleven to get a Diet Coke. And of course, those metal bars, you go in, you heard it go clang. Like, and I was like, Ugh. oh. And you pull it out and you look at it. You're like, oh. So you like when others do scratches on the watches that you end up getting, but when you're the one scratching, then you want to cry. If it was something like, you know, saving a person out of the street from a, from a car that was out of control, I'll live with that. But to get a Diet Coke out of a 7-Eleven, that could have been prevented, you know? Yeah. If your kid comes over with a fork and hits it, ah, it's okay. If you scratch you it by it. accident, okay. Well, yeah, that was that was unforgivable. I cried for about three days, and I had to put it back in my little green pouch and, like, forget about <laughs> it. And it took, like, a year before I found it again. I was like, oh, okay. I remember it again. And you get most of your watches here in the U.S.? Well, I deal with boutiques. I deal with auto authorized dealers. I also deal with dealers. Uh, so as you know, there's a bunch yeah, but of for vintage guys pieces. It's slightly different though. With vintage pieces, you need to have the right educated dealer to help you. And of course, there's five or six that I deal with on a constant basis. A lot of them will disagree about certain things. So you have to kind of like go with your own truth and be like, okay, I have to make an educated guess. So sometimes there are pieces that you look at, is it unpolished, is it original? You show it to these five people and there, three of them will say yes, two of them will say no. And did you ever come up with something where you were right and they were wrong? Never. Huh, they that's are a well good read. thing. Yes, never trust myself, that's why I have dealer friends because if you ever do anything for myself, I'm blinded by passion. If you say something is limited edition, if you say something is one of a kind, if you say something just was whatever, found in a safe, new old stock, I'll believe it and I'll I'll just, I'll give my child, I'll give you one of my children for that watch. <laughs> That's how much I love it. I'll give you two sometimes if it's that hot. Don't say that out loud. Are you out of your mind? Edit that out. Edit that out, please. <laughs> <laughs> so. Next. Next. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Goes back in the bag. Boom. Let's see. Let's see. <gasps> I think we're out of green leather bags. Oh no. We only have green suede bags. 